Ah, welcome to FlameFlash.net, the podcast episode 56. Thank you very much. Thank you for stopping by. As I'm sure you've assumed by now, as this, I'm sure if those of you are following along already from home, I'm FlameFlash of FlameFlash.net and Monk of Mists. And let's get right started into the Raptor Report, because we have even more E3 news. That's right, we're recording twice this week. We recorded on Monday, and we're recording on our usual time for episode number 56. The Raptor Report's pretty slim pickings this time around, probably because I've been distracted. e 3 is going on. Come on, man. We had a beta release. Lots of interesting stuff has been going on. I'm a content creator at this point. I realize that. I don't consume content when it's there. I also create it. Sims 3. Family absolutely loves it. My daughter was traumatized a little bit because over the weekend, somebody came and picked up her puppy because her Sims weren't taking proper care of her puppy because she wasn't taking care of her properly of her Sims. Oops. It was both cute and sad that she was so brokenhearted about it. Fortunately, she hadn't been saving, which is usual. So we were able to exit the game fully. And when we got back in, Red Flare was kind enough to help her restore the puppy's happiness so that it wouldn't be taken away. Much to the detriment of the humans of the household, but not losing the puppy was paramount. World of Warcraft. Well, it's that time of the month. No, I'm not talking about that type of the month. I'm talking about Dark Moon Fair. It's on again this week, and as usual, things have lined up to keep me from logging in every week. Specifically this week, E3. Holy crap. One more item on the Raptor Report, and we'll roll right into E3 and the one non-E3 news bit we have for you this week. The other one would be Lego Harry Potter, year 5 through 7. Now, this was the birthday gift to the son, the oldest son, last Friday. He's loving it. It really looks like he's enjoying it. Hopped in a few times to help him out on a level or two, or rescue him from his baby brother when he desperately needs somebody who actually understands the concept of the game to be playing along. It's good. I like it. It's Every LEGO game, they seem to learn from their past experiences, their past mistakes, and improve upon it. It's quite impressive, really. It's a good game. If you're a Harry Potter fan... If you're a Lego fan, go for it. Personally, I'm really looking forward to the Lord of the Rings series. Um, The oldest son actually got Fellowship of the Ring and Two Towers from the library just a couple days ago, or was that yesterday? Now, I own that collection, but he didn't know that. But he's interested. That's awesome. He started... I think he started back in on Harry Potter... But he has interest in Tolkien. I win. I'm doing something right to geekify him to his fullest potential. And speaking of geekifying, it's E3 week. That's right. That wonderful week where the gaming industry gets together with the journal gaming journalism industry and gives us a massive amount of stuff to talk about. First, have the notes ready, ready to be posted. Hope everybody liked uh, 55.5, episode 55.5. Last Monday, posted the notes. I'm going to try to do this from now on to both help you and help me. I mean, if the notes are up somewhere, I'm more likely to be reading them from my screen rather than reading them in my notebook. We'll see how that works out. And when the notes are up there, you know where my sources are. That's pretty nice to know. In and of itself. So, the non-E3, the non-gaming news of this week, 
would be that a texter was found guilty of vehicular homicide. So there he goes, you know, texting away. Yes, it's plugged in because it's charging. Texting away, we're probably doing it one thumb and trying to keep an eye on the road. Yeah, I know a few of you f friends out there who do that. Don't. Stop. Stop doing it. Stop texting while driving. It's worse than driving drunk. Because you're making the conscious decision to get behind the wheel and then text at the same time. Drunk drivers at least have the excuse of sometimes thinking they're better off than they really are. But still inexcusable, but slightly better than the individual who goes, oh, I just got a new text, and tap, 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 crash. Be safe out there. That's all I'm asking. Flame Flash cares. So, we'll uh, go a roundabout way and kind of backdoor into the E3. For instance, if you grab your 3DS, that's right, reach over, grab it, mine sitting, charging on my uh, desk, friendly little cradle. Just this evening, there's a new special me that will come and visit your 3DS. So make sure you clear off any and all Me Plaza notifications. You have the opportunity to go and pick up a pink piece, a pink puzzle piece, if so needed. And he fights by your side, just like Reggie. I have all the hats at this point, though, from the uh, Find Me quests. Quite the uh, proud achievement, actually. I've been working on it for a while. All the hats now, just working on to finally beat the Find Me 2 secret quest for the last time until they release the Find Me 3. And then I can spend all my play coins on puzzle pieces and not feel bad about my uh, me's going to battle without any magic potions. But he'll come you. Hey, I have a friend online, but that's my cousin. But it's one of those E3, well, it was just teasing me, he's no longer online. It was one of those E3 themed announcements. Reggie also sent us all a swap note, uh, note, with, which will also gift us a new background for swap note. We'll let the 3DS rest again. But grab it, go to the eShop. There you can download and stream some of the new uh, trailers for E3. For instance, Tank, Tank, Tank for Namco. Yeah, that's that's the title there. I really, really hope that it's going to be a budget title, because or it's for the 3DS and I just didn't realize it. I thought it looked like it was for the Wii. We'll try to confirm that. But, you're a tank. It's kind of self-explanatory. Yeah, Wii U. Been announced for the Wii U. So it darn well better be a um, budget title. Crappy graphics. I mean, it looks like it's going to be a fun game for a party, but it also looks like it's going to be one of those quickly played and then quickly set aside games. Just another one of those lackluster launch titles that could easily be considered shovelware if we were in the mid to late console season like we are. If it came out now, for the Wii, everybody would point and laugh at it and go on their merry way. So let's really hope that Namco remembers to price it accordingly. Now this next one is a uh, London-based game 
called Zombie U. Supposedly it's going to be a Wii U exclusive. And it's definitely M-rated, straight from Ubisoft. And it's one of the coolest games that I'm never going to play. Now why do I say that? Why do I preface it with that? Because it's M-rated for one. I'm very selective with the M-rated games that I play, the M-rated games that I download and install to, say, the PS3 or Xbox. I have to be selective. I'm a parent. Now, I'm not much for explicit violence and gore. It's really cool that when you fail, you come back as another human, pick up right where you left off, and can even go and track down your previous life as a zombie and finish yourself off. Or find your friends out there and how they've uniquely failed and put them out of their misery. That's really cool. But I'm never going to have the chance to play it. I'm never going to feel comfortable playing it and then Oh, crap. Um, I have to either play it muted, in case one of the kids starts sneaking down the hall, or I have to play it with headsets on, somehow arrange it. I No, I'm just not going to buy it. That and I prefer implicit violence. Implicit horror. I rarely watch R-rated movies. Come on, guys. Why would I go for an M-rated game where you're destroying zombies. It's just not me. Not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it's not for me. But one of the most important pieces, oh, before I get off of the 3DS available trailers, New Super Mario Brothers 2. And New Super Mario Brothers Wii. Supposedly, these come from two separate developer houses, two separate groups, so they're taking the Mario theme, the Mario 2D platforming classic, in completely different directions. I approve. In New Super Mario Bros. 2, this is the 3DS game, and it's all about coins, it looks like. It's all about trying to convert your enemies into coins, or end up regurgitating coins because you're wearing a coin block on your head or flying as Raccoon Mario. Awesome. I can't wait. It's going to be the first game downloadable from the eShop. So the full game will be downloadable from the eShop. Yes, it's time to go and buy a larger SD card. Yes, I'm flashing the camera for those of you listening to the audio only. But I'm not going to download it. It's one of those reasons that I'm also holding off on the Vita. Because I'm a f- member of a family of gamers. It's not just me. I'm not the only gamer. If I was the only gamer, I'd download it directly to my 3DS because that would be a heck of a lot more convenient. I'm the dad of a gaming community. The I have two sons and one daughter and Red Flare, my wife, who will all be interested in this game. It wouldn't be fair to me to buy it only from on my 3DS and download it, because then I'd never get to use my 3DS. It wouldn't be fair to them, because they'd rarely have the opportunity to play it. I keep my 3DS in my pocket for the potential uh, street passes and the pedometer. The pedometer is really cool in that. So, Cartridge Base will go. I believe it comes out sometime in August. Perfect to pick up for Christmas. Mario games don't get price reduced, so it's a pretty safe buy to buy it when it first comes out. Maybe get an Amazon.com pre-order $10 gift certificate or whatever their promotion happens to be at the time. And save that for another Christmas purchase. Start planning ahead. Yes, we're halfway through the year, but that means that Christmas is just that much closer. And as a parent, you have to think that far ahead sometimes if you don't want to go bankrupt. Now, 
New Super Mario Brothers U makes me nervous as a parent. Wii U makes me nervous as a parent. I've already mentioned the whole message pop-up, community, features thing. Supposedly Nintendo is going to be watching these messages, filtering these messages, trying to make the messages smart and just watch for bad things. But I darn well better have a feature that says, no. Only friends. Only may I pick up my friends friends on the Wii U comment system when I get killed by that doggone Goomba for the 17th time in a row. Because the baby boy is going to run into that Goomba at least 17 times, if not more. And it will be credited to my account. So I will look not very effective suffer from the same fate in Awesome Knots on the PSN when the little guy decides to fire up an online match and then hide in the base and not do anything. Yeah. Though, on the plus side, hopefully people are understanding of the fact that I am clearly not playing solo. I mean, I got Bionic Family Trophy. So, Every one of the characters, all six of the starting characters, has now won a game. That's pretty cool. Back on track. New Super Mario Bros. U looks amazing. I'm looking forward to it. It's one of those games that they are smart to be announcing this early and trying to push because I'm interested. It's going to be one of the three games that possibly sells me on the system. Possibly. Possibly. Tank 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 looks good, but I'm not going to buy it unless it's cheaper. The Nintendo Land that was announced is hopefully going to be a pack in, which gives me two games Duke of Mario Brothers Wii U and the uh, Nintendo Land. Lots of press covering Nintendo Land at the moment. It smells like a very Nintendo heavily themed Mario party, but with your Miis dressed as Nintendo characters. So your Mii is dressed as Link or Mario, and you're playing through a bunch of mini games. Something I'm worried about as far as the Wii goes is I have four classic Wii controllers, Wii remotes. I really hope they don't assume that I'm going to go and buy the attachment for every single one of them. We'll see. Still waiting on what accessories and games come with it. That's going to matter a lot. It can handle two of the big iPad-like game pads, though. Two controllers for the system. Awesome. I mean, slightly snarky because that's kind of the running gag at the moment. But being, ab being able to have those two game pads, potentially, is a great bonus. You can't frown on Nintendo for that. They also have confirmed for Nintendo... Boy, I'm talking a lot about Nintendo. Weird. The uh, Wii U has been confirmed to be able to take your WiiWare and Virtual Console titles from the Wii and transfer them to your Wii U. Transfer the licenses. Thank goodness. I really wish... Well, I, they better come out and say it for Xbox and PlayStation that the same is going to be true. It's going to be a mess otherwise. An absolute mess. For instance, PlayStation Plus just added a bunch of new games. I may have mentioned this last time. It's all blurring together. It's getting late. But I'm to the point where I might need to get a terabyte internal hard drive for my PlayStation 3. Terabyte. Not a gig count. A single terabyte to hold everything. If they keep releasing these really highfalutin full PlayStation 3 games. Now, the good news is 
We already have Ratchet and Clank all for one. I think I did mention this. And the M-rated ones, I'm just adding to the PlayStation Network account for when I am capable or interested in downloading them. So it's cool. If I wanted to download everything, I would have to get that terabyte hard drive. Maybe with the tax return. We'll see. Ah. So we'll move on from Nintendo. Looks like I covered a lot of PlayStation and Xbox probably on Monday. I'm not sure, though. A lot, a lot jumped out at me. Uh, the Beyond game looks absolutely amazing. I'm highly interested in that because it came from Heavy Rain developers. But there's not enough to go off of for most of the stuff. They're not discussing new hardware, new devices. It's more of the same. Not a bad thing, but it also doesn't light a fire under me to talk about it. Into the bliz world of Blizzard, Print Warcraft are now doing t-shirts. Print Warcraft is that neat site that lets you print your character, oh, crazy name, inspiring name, on a mouse pad, a poster, or now a t-shirt. When I went to go and try the interface out, clearly they were getting Zerg rushed because the website just wasn't working as it should. So we'll sit back, we'll wait, we'll process this podcast, probably post it either late tomorrow or Friday, and we'll wait and see. We'll wait, we'll check it out later. It'd be really cool to have my gnome on a t-shirt, or a gathering of all my characters on a t-shirt. That would actually be even better, to really show off my alcoholicism. Yes, I'll use that as a word. You're going to get a cooking apprentice. Come mists. That's right. Uh, an apprentice. Now, rumor has it, once you complete everything and you're exalted with this new little individual that you partner up with, you might be able to, say, pass on the wisdom to your alts. Don't know. Haven't seen it yet. It's going to be one of those things that tempts me very much to level my druid main rather than my monk, who I hope to be my future main, assuming they fix some of their account-bound issues like the uh, Traveler's Tundra Mana. Not that I've bought it yet, but I want to buy it. If the account-bound is fixed. Finally, last but not least... Diablo 3 is looking at getting an update. They're considering fixing some of the drop rates for the higher difficulty levels. So as you progress through normal, or the one after normal, you can tell I haven't beaten normal yet, you get gear drops, of course. Well, those gear drops have the potential of being upgrades. So as you progress through normal, Nightmare, Hell, and Infernal, Inferno, you get new gear drops, upgrades. You progress your gear as you progress in the story. But that's not what they've been seeing. They've been seeing price gouging on the gold auction house because people sitting in Act 3 or 4 of the final difficulty level are going, neener, 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 you can't catch us unless you pay us a astronomical amounts of gold. Ha 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 ha! Because I really shouldn't be going to a previous difficulty level to farm for gear for the current difficulty level. My two cents. But they're going to fix it. Which is very nice. Ah, helping advancement, that's right. Couldn't read my own handwriting for a moment. But that's it. We are halfway through E3. I'm Flame Flash. 
find me on Twitter, Facebook, FlameFlash.net, fan page, or just check out Monk of Mists and FlameFlash.net, and of course the podcast on WordPress.com. Typing in FlameFlash.net still gets you here, don't worry. But, thanks for stopping by, I'm glad the video feed didn't screw up, and we'll see you next time. Signing off.